My books, The Origin of Names, Words, and Everything in Between, Volumes 1 and 2, are available to purchase from most major booksellers in all major formats. Order your copies today so you can enjoy these books for yourself and help support the channel. When I think of ancient European languages that had a huge influence on the world, I, and many others I presume, would think of Latin. This was the language of the Roman Empire, a powerhouse that spread across a huge amount of Europe and even to parts of Asia and Africa. While Latin is now seen as a dead language, meaning it isn't spoken natively by a large group of people in say a nation or region, its legacy has lived on. This is in the form of other languages on our globe that evolved from Latin. The Romance languages, ones like Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese and Romanian, all have Latin as their key ancestor. Even other languages like English which aren't direct descendants of Latin have been influenced by the tongue of Rome. Ew, the phrase tongue of Rome sounded way less dirty in my head, sorry, let's continue. It really wouldn't be too much of a stretch to call Latin the most influential language of Europe. But before there was Latin, there was Greek. The Greek language was spoken in ancient Greece, which predates Rome by a long shot. It was the language the myths of Zeus, Heracles, and Medusa were shared in initially, as well as being the language of the great philosophers like Aristotle and Socrates. The culture and thoughts of ancient Greece went on to shape so much of the culture of the Western world. Rome itself was heavily influenced by the culture of Greece. Yet despite ancient Greece being so influential, with its ideas spreading across the globe, the actual Greek language on the other hand didn't spread quite as much as Latin did. The Greek language is part of the huge Indo-European language family, which contains so many of the world's languages. It is specifically a subdivision of the Hellenic branch of the family. Most branches of the Indo-European family have several languages under their belt, like the multiple Slavic languages, or Germanic languages, or Romance languages as previously mentioned. This isn't the case with the Hellenic branch however. Greek is seemingly the only Hellenic language still on the planet today being spoken in a big way. There is also Sakonian, which is spoken by a much smaller group of people and is seen by some as a dialect of Greek. So in regards to modern Hellenic languages, the buck more or less stops at Greek. It never evolved into any other languages like Latin did. Greek also isn't really spoken in large quantities in other parts of the world either. It's an official language in Greece of course, as well as Cyprus. It is also recognised as a minority language in other nearby nations. And of course there are Greek speaking expat communities all around the world too. But other than that, Greek is only really spoken in Greece. I find this so odd. The culture of ancient Greece was so pivotal in creating the modern western world, and went on to influence so much around us. Yet the language never seemingly evolved and spread like the languages of other influential cultures. Why is this the case? Well, there's a few reasons as to why Greek didn't evolve and spread. The key reason is probably down to what exactly ancient Greece really was. Unlike Rome, Ancient Greece wasn't an empire, in fact it wasn't really a single unified entity. What we now commonly refer to as Ancient Greece is a modern term to refer to the collection of independent city-states like Athens and Sparta that operated on the landmass of modern day Greece. Ancient Greece even includes land that isn't part of modern day Greece, like how Troy is believed to have been in modern day Turkey. These city-states were all pretty independent from one another, with some trading happening between them and of course they all spoke the Greek language of the time. It's due to the fact that Greece was divided into smaller city-states as opposed to being a single unified land as to why they didn't spread themselves in their language further. While these city-states had huge power and influence, they didn't really have the capacity or urge to spread further than the surroundings of their base city. I mean, it's not really a city-state if it's bigger than a city, is it? So why wasn't Greece a single unified entity? Well, the main answer to that question is the land's geography. Greece is a very unique country in regards to its geography. It's also a massive pain to draw, so appreciate these illustrations I've done of the nation. Thank you. The land consists of very mountainous terrain, isolated valleys, and of course numerous islands in the Aegean Sea. This geography meant that it was pretty difficult for one single power to control it all, especially way back in the ancient past. It was just easy for smaller groups of people to govern themselves, which gave birth to the city-states. With one power unable to claim all of Greece, it's no surprise that a single Greek power could spread beyond the modern nation's general area. There was some colonising done by the ancient Greeks however, and 
colonizing isn't the best word to use in this case, I must admit. By colonizing, I mean Greek people settling in other parts of the world. As the centuries went on, some sailed across the Mediterranean and settled in new places, even going as far as the Iberian Peninsula, where the Greek city of Hermoroscopium was founded. Yet, despite there being other Greek settlements across Europe, none of them seemingly had enough power or influence to have a long-term effect on the languages being spoken where they were set up. It's not like the part of modern Spain where Hermoroscopium was located are all speaking Greek now. For the most part, the Greek language in the time of ancient Greece mainly stuck to the land we now call Greece. Yet even so, there's been a huge amount of time between the time of ancient Greece and the modern nation of Greece. So why didn't the language evolve, even unto itself? Well, it did, just not in the diverse way that Latin did. The Greek spoken in ancient Greece isn't the exact same Greek spoken in modern Greece. In the past, while the city-states spoke the same language, they used different dialects and versions of it. These are collectively referred to as the ancient Greek language. One of the most popular dialects was the one spoken in Athens, which was called the Attic dialect. This one spread across the land with some help from one Alexander the Great, and began mixing with other dialects. All these dialects dialects mixing eventually gave us a unified Greek language, which is now referred to as Koine Greek. Koine would have become the de facto language of the land, and it was Koine Greek that would eventually morph into medieval Greek, and of course then into modern Greek. So Greek has evolved, just from one form of Greek into another, and instead of intermixing with other languages, it more intermixed with other dialects of itself to get where it is today. It's worth once again comparing the trajectory of Greek with that of Latin. As I mentioned up top, Latin evolved into many different languages, and the reason it was able to do this was because it intermixed with so many other languages, as the Roman Empire claimed more land. Latin speakers, Germanic speakers, and Celtic speakers would have lived side by side, up until to the point that the languages would come together to form new languages. Conversely, many people came into the Roman Empire and into Rome itself with their languages. This wasn't happening all that much in Greece. Greek speakers didn't really leave Greece, and not many non-Greek speakers really came into Greece. Greece hasn't been completely left to its own devices all this time, however. Many outside empires did go on to claim the land, noticeably Rome itself. Rome didn't enforce their language onto any of their claims, including Greece. Greece. This meant that the language could carry on doing its thing, and once again it could boil down to the tough geography of Greece, which made traversing it difficult, even for people who claimed it as their own. This is all well and good, and helps us understand why Greek didn't spread and evolve from the perspective of ancient Greece. Yet there have actually been full-blown empires that spoke Greek, that unlike the city-states of ancient Greece, actually expanded outwards of their language. Most noticeably, the Byzantine Empire, aka the Eastern Roman Empire. Empire. There's also the Macedonian Empire who may have spoken Greek or a language relating to Greek. It's a whole thing that could probably be a video unto itself, so for now we'll just focus on the Byzantines. This empire of course started life as the eastern half of the full Roman Empire, before splitting off and doing its own thing. They identified themselves as Roman, and the true successors to Western Rome slash the OG Rome. They of course started out with speaking Latin, yet the official language was changed to Greek in the early 7th century century AD. There seems to have been a few reasons as to why this change was made. First off, the land the Byzantine Empire occupied by this point was primarily Greek speaking already, that being the land of modern day Greece and the Anatolian Peninsula. Yeah, Turkey was speaking Greek at this time, it, it's a whole thing. Secondly, not as many people knew Latin by this point, especially the higher ups who had lived in a Greek speaking part of the world for most of their life. And as the centuries went on, Latin became the language of the enemies, specifically with the Holy Roman Empire and their use of it. So Latin was ditched and Greek was in. This made Greek the official language of not just modern day Greece, but land that covers modern day Turkey, as well as other parts of Europe and North Africa. Of course, none of these places speak Greek officially today, minus Greece. So what happened? Well, invasion happened. As the Byzantine Empire waned in power, parts of it were overtaken by other powers. In North Africa, claims were lost in the Muslim conquests, and Anatolia, as well as Greece, was overtaken by the Ottomans. 
Unlike the Romans in the past, they were more strict with their language rules, so places that were speaking Greek in the past were now speaking Arabic and Turkish. Though I just mentioned that Greece itself fell under Ottoman rule. The Ottoman Empire of course evolved into modern Turkey, yet Greece isn't part of Turkey today, nor do they speak Turkish. So how did the Greek language survive Ottoman rule of Greece? It seems that the language was heavily protected by Greek Orthodox monks and priests who didn't want it to die out while the land was under Ottoman rule. This involved the language being taught in secret schools so it could be learnt with the Ottomans finding out. This worked out and eventually Greek was allowed to be taught formally while the land was still under Ottoman rule. Finally, in the 1830s, Greece gained independence from the Ottoman Empire and became its own country, which more or less brings us up to modern Greece as a nation and the modern Greek language. So the main reason the language really didn't evolve was due to the fact it had very little reason to evolve other than to evolve in on itself and merge with other dialects. And it didn't really spread because ancient Greece didn't really do the whole colonization thing and when a bigger empire did speak Greek it was more or less all wiped away when that empire came to an end. While this lack of evolution and spread could be seen as a negative thing, I think it's amazing just how resilient this language has been over the millennia. And while the language might not have spread from a colonization perspective or evolved from a language family perspective, it has undoubtedly had a huge influence on the wider speaking world. Many words in many other languages have their origins in Greek. This is mainly due to the huge influence that Greek had on the Latin language. Despite the two not being related, Latin borrowed a huge amount of words from Greek and Latinized them. Then those Latin words became words in other languages like French and English. Take a word like democracy. This came to English via the Latin democratia and Latin got it from the Greek democratia. This is just one of the plethora of words that have their ultimate roots in Greek. But in all honesty, it's all Greek to me. Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explained or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.